Welcome to the Life's Twist Show with your hosts, Terry Robinson, Lance Conley, and Eric Harrison. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, This is the Life's Twist Show from the LET Group, and we have a momentous occasion tonight. We are celebrating our 10th episode. Um, We started this... um, probably several months ago. We've been consistent, and now we're at show number 10. So, man, this is a milestone for us. So we thank you for for joining us and being a part of this. And, hey, we're just going to jump right into it. So first, as I usually do, I'm going to introduce uh, my partners in crime, first and foremost, uh, my man. uh, This is my guy right here. He helps to put everything together. He is the glue. And it's Lance Conley. What's going on, Lance? How are you doing this evening? Good, good, Eric. Uh, good evening to you. And uh, uh, it is a tense show. And uh, it's, uh, I want to thank all the listeners for participating. And I uh, uh, look forward to a good participation tonight, too. Great, great, great. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just move right along and get my man Terry Robinson in. What's up, Terry? Not too much. How you guys doing? Man, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm just, I'm just really feeling good about this being our, our tenth show, and and also, you know, um, I think we got a little spicy topic to talk about as well. So, um, we might as well jump right on into it. So, Terry, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take the reins, and then we'll start the discussion. Yeah, we, you know, we we want to follow up with this uh, whole Grayson Allen thing, the guy, the kid from Duke. Uh, you know. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad kid at all. Obviously, a hell of an athlete, um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a great athlete at that. Uh, but what, what was strange to me is uh, there was a lot of talk about him um, having to sit out for some, you know, X amount of games. And um, it was supposed to, from what I understand, they were supposed to follow through with that. And I just happened to be watching the game, and I noticed that he was playing. And it was just so, so in essence, he, he served a one-game suspension. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong at this point, but it was just kind of surprising to me after I was hearing all this talk about, you know, he had to serve five games. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what what makes him different from the next player, you know. And and obviously the first thing to come up is, you know, race or the power because he is at a Duke University. And so, I, I, you know, I threw that out there, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how did this happen or why did it happen. Uh, because I think, you know, in the, in, the, in the end, you know, here's a kid that's obviously struggling with something. And, and I'm sure it's stress related, you know. So how do you, how do you help this kid in the long run? Because in the short term, you know, he, he's going to provide something for that university or the school. But in the long run, how does this, how does this affect that kid in the long run as far as him dealing with things that he probably needs to deal with? And a lot of times it's things that he don't even know he needs to deal with. But when you see this kind of behavior, the tantrum, you know, it, 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 it just sends a, a signal that, you know, something needs to be looked at and something needs to be addressed within this kid. And I think when, if you just serve a one-game suspension after kicking people three or four times and, 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 and so you feel like I, did, I served my time, I did what I need to do, it's a done deal. But even two games after that, you see them kick another person. But they say, well, I, you know, I can't really tell if it was a kick. Well, I played basketball for a lot of years, and I've never seen that, and I've never done that. I've never fallen, fallen off balance where I kicked somebody. I mean, so it, it, it's, it's a strange thing, and, and I'm just trying to figure it out within my, you know, within my own little scope of things. It's just something just don't feel right about it, like I said. And, and, I, and I've known for years that, you know, if, you, if you're good, People will use you up as long as you allow them to. And I think that's what's happening with this kid. So what do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know I agree with you. Um, because I think if you look at his behaviors, you know, on and off the court, you know, the incidents of kicking and then his uh, tantrums that he was having on the sidelines, you know, I, I look at, okay, what's best for the kid? And, you know, why is he, like you said, he was supposed to have a five five-game suspension, all of a sudden, after game one, he's out in the court playing again. 
and you know who makes those decisions uh you know you have the a c c you have you know Duke University and the president, and then you have uh obviously the coach mike Chesky and uh you know that type of treatment or that type of uh consequence and people's perception of it is you know what I find pretty interesting because would would a different player under different different circumstances has been treated the same way. And, you know, that's one of the topics we're going to discuss tonight is, you know, when we see or witness those type of things, you know, perceptions, you know, our bias and all those things go into it. And I, and I think that it would be interesting to see if we get some callers on here to uh, kind of share their, 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 uh, you know, stories or their, uh, their version or, you know, their perception of, of the situation because, you know, it's my belief that, you know, if it was a different player under different different circumstances, um, they wouldn't wouldn't have got that pass. And so I think it really goes into the fact is as an institution, Duke University, exactly. are they really doing what's best for the kid um, by just kind of, you know, brushing it under the rug and saying, okay, after game one, we'll let you play because it's more important to, to win ACC you know, the ACC uh, conference and uh, get a better seat for the the uh, March run. Um, and, and that's my view on it. And that's something we can discuss further. But I'll, I'll give Eric a chance to kind of share his initial thoughts first and uh, then we can move forward. Yeah, so so my, 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 my thoughts are similar to yours. You know, of course, you know, you know, I, I think race plays a big part in just about everything, honestly, and especially when it comes to something like this. But at the same time, money and power plays an even bigger bigger role than race. And like you said, you know, how much, you know, these guys make it to the ACC tournament, if they win the national tournament, how much money do they stand to make? So you think exactly. about all hey, these Terry. different things. Hey, Terry, yes. before you go any further, before you guys go any further, we actually have a caller. So I'm going to go ahead and okay. bring the caller in and let the caller uh, come on in and introduce himself. So, so caller, please introduce yourself, and you know what the subject is, but I want you to introduce yourself because I think uh, Terry might be pretty happy to hear who this is. Yeah, hey, hey, Big T, man, this is Bobby Jones, man. We went to the V together, played baseball. What's up, Bobby? How yeah. you doing, man? Long What's time up? no here. I'm doing I well, know. man. Good I saw you. Saw your post, yeah, man, it's good. It's, I saw your post last week, and you know, I I don't really get involved in these things too much, but you know, this is this is a situation that this happens with kids from third grade, man, from second grade. If you have more of a skill set than other kids, I mean, the other gentleman was talking about if this was someone else, how would they handle it? Well, it's a lot of variables with this. For one, these kids are pampered. If he can run, jump, hoop better than anyone else, they get pushed along. And Grayson, is he's a talented kid. He's an emotional kid. And he gets away with some of these things and, and what he does. And also just Duke has this reputation. You know, Christian Leitner was a, a quality player, probably one of the best players, top five players ever to attend Duke, but he had that reputation when he stomped the kid chess in that big tournament game back in the, in the nineties, he got away with that. Yep. And so here's Grayson. It didn't happen once. If this happened once and they suspended him for one game, then, you know, Hey, he, he made a mistake. The kid was upset about the turn of events in the game. This is a pattern. And coach K needs to be held more responsible for this. He gave a big wolf about, I'm going to suspend him, and I'm going to do this, and we're going to handle this. He didn't handle it. He brushed it under the rug like they normally do. I don't know what they did internally to uh, deal with Grayson's family and, and a Duke situation, but this is a perpetual problem. And if it had been any other kid, if it had been a black kid that done that, and has a history of doing shit like that. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Take that back. My okay, there, okay but, man. That's but okay. if you've had a, had a perpetual reputation 
of pulling stunts like that, they would have very little patience with him. And if he wasn't the star player on the team, he'll be gone real quick, exited, out the door. The university's not going to deal with the embarrassment. They're not going to have it. So this, this could come back to haunt Coach K. He's a major figure in basketball, a major international figure with the Olympic team. He's well respected. Exactly. This could crush him. And but the media, they're not gonna come down hard on Coach K. If this yeah. was Leonard, yeah. uh, this was Florida State's coach, and he had a player doing something like that, they'd deal with that. It would be a major, major situation. So you can't it's have. It's so funny you mentioned that. It's so funny you mentioned because we talked about this show earlier in the week, and I mentioned him. Uh, Florida State coach because he's a very outspoken uh, African American coach. He's strong, he's stern, and I was like, man, that dude would not have that. He wouldn't care who this kid was. He would have dealt with it from the first time, and then if it happened the second time, most programs, like you said, man, the people would be gone. I mean, T, what you think, man? I mean, right? You know, most kids would be gone from the program. Period. Well, we already know that. You know, we already, you know, because we've seen it over and over again. Uh, so I think, you know, it, it wasn't even ironic to me that Coach K ended up going out and having back surgery. You know, I, I could, I, I'm, I'm still puzzled by that, you know, during the middle of the season. And so I think, I think it's taking a toll on him too. I really do. And um, I think when you, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, I mean, you end up, you, you end up suffering in that program and that kid's going to suffer as a result. I believe in the long run. So I think, yeah. Bobby, you know, I we think all... I, I pre... huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, because I, you know, I, was gonna I, say, I think you're right on. Go ahead. You know, we played sports, and we, we all get emotional with sports. We're competitive. We want to win. You know, I, I I didn't play college. I didn't make it to the pros, but we had a very competitive high school baseball team, uh, competitive public league. And we wanted to win. And we had situations where we almost got into brawls. Behavior is not acceptable. Your teammates would get on you about it, your coaches, your peers. And if Coach K doesn't nip that in the bud, they're going to be forced. When I say they, it's the president, the AD, the ACC. They're going to be forced to do something. And they don't really want to do that to Coach K. Man, he's an icon. He's a he's a major figure in college basketball and just sports in general, and they, they, they're gonna for, he's gonna make them force their hand to do something if he doesn't handle that situation. Because you're right, if he keeps allowing that, he's just putting Grayson in a bad situation. You know, it's something that's yeah. gonna negatively impact not just Duke, but it can impact the kid himself. Exactly. Hey, Lance, right. what, what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah. Lance, I, think, I think that's something that you was kind of bringing up before, too, as we discussed this before the show. Yeah, 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 exactly, because, you know, I think the caller makes a great point. You have Christian Leitner, and you know, I think you have several players from Duke, you know, Steve Wachowski and, you know, uh, Bobby Hurley, all those players that, you know, kind of push the limits, and then you have, uh, you know, Grayson Allen that's uh, – you know, this situation, do you guys feel like, you know, Duke gets a pass because of Coach K? Is it a media issue? And, and the truth is, is that I think Duke, Duke just had a player that had to transfer to Maryland um, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, maybe last yeah. year he played. Um, and do, do players get treated differently based on, you know, who they are and what they look like? Yeah, Rashawn Suleiman um, was the player. Rashawn Suleiman was the player that tried yeah, that's him. That's he finished him. up at uh, Maryland. Um, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to clarify that. Call yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, no, definitely. Yeah. Well, definitely they get a pass. All, all the above. Definitely they get a pass. You got Coach K. You got the Duke player. You know, yeah, I – you know, and, and it's, it's the way that this society, in particular, is set up. You know, when you see when you see the the African American kid acting like that, I mean, it, it scares everybody to death. But when you see the white kid doing that, it's like, oh, what's wrong with him? You know, how can we help him? And that's always been it. And, and we and nobody really uh-huh. talks about it. 
you know, unless it's a, 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 this type of setup where well, we, we we can talk freely because people don't want us to cross the line. But we're gonna do that because we we're all about the truth. We're all about all people, no matter what color, or what, what what race you are. It's just, it's just about being fair. And so, yeah. of course, in Coach K, you know, Coach K, you know, and the reason why Duke is not going to push the issue with him, I don't think they will, because he he, he brings too much money to the university. And, 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 and when it's all said and done, that's what it boils down to, you know. How much money do they stand to lose if something happens to Coach K and his players? So Coach K is bigger than the president, I'm sure, at Duke. You know, yeah, <laughs> because of what he brings to the school or what he brings to the university, so he might as well be the president. He's gonna dictate everything. Because you're right, you got the ACC, you got the university, and none of those guys step in and say, "Wait a minute, no, this kid's gonna serve more than this." You know, coach uh-huh. said, "We'll give him one game. We'll, we'll give him one game. Then we got to get him back in because our goal is to win the national championship, and without him, we won't win the championship." What do you think the school is gonna say? Well, we got to win that national championship championship because uh, we like what those checks look like, regardless. So we can sweep this under the rug. I mean, they do it all the time. And and this is no this is no different. And I don't think the kid really learned anything from it because he he actually did it again this past week. So what did he learn? And, right. and you know, so the kid is still, you know, the issues that he's, that he's personally having are still there because the behavior is still there. So What's going to happen to this kid? I, I'm, I'm wondering if he's using substances because if you go through yeah. something like this and that kind of scrutiny, you you go back to the court and you do the same thing over and over again, something's going on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it is interesting because, you know, I, I, my feeling if it, if it was, a, you know, a black player that played at University of Cincinnati, you know, I think society, the media, everybody would jump on that and, you know, expect it not only for him to be suspended, but, you know, contemplating whether or not he should play for the rest of the year. Um, you know, and, and the thing about Duke, the truth is, is, you know, you have a institution that's, you know, I'm sure the president's white. You have a, a, a white coach. Um, and you have a white player. And really as a society, I think our expectations or our perceptions are quite different on, you know, how we should handle this situations and how we perceive it. Um, you know, I think uh, when people see Grayson Allen, they say the five, or like uh, I think someone said earlier that, or we could say, well, we, we can help this kid. Let's uh, figure a way out to to do that versus, you know, to, to make another assumption based on, you know, what a person looks like. And, uh, you know, in this case, I think it's a kind of an example of society and, you know, how we view people um, and how we treat people and, and some of the consequences. Um, and, um, you know, I, again, I think if it was a, a player at a different institution um, that, you know, played for a different team and, uh, you know, was um, African-American, you know, I, I think the societal, the media, and everybody's perception would have been a lot different based on, you know, how we're programmed and our, you know, our bias and how we view things. And, and to me, it's a societal issue. And, uh, you know, I think it's now it's definitely got a pass. Wow. And, and, and um, you think I, about it. Yeah, I do. Oh, go ahead, Pete. Go ahead. And if you think about it, and not to jump off the subject, because I think it still relates to what we're talking about, you think about the comments George Carl made about those players. Who were those players? What did they look like? You know, and, and, and think about it. Did he make any comments about anybody else other than African, his, his former African American players? I don't think that he did, and I think it was it was set up that way. And why is that? Wow, wow, that's a great that's a great place to uh, kind of leave off right now, just for the moment. Um, man, we've got to pay some bills with these commercials, but man, this is a powerful, powerful conversation. Uh, man, callers, call in, weigh in on this, because, you know, we think that this is not just a situation that's dealing with Duke University and Grayson Allen, but we think that this is something that's systematic or systemic across NCAA sports, period, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever it is, sports, period. Um, So please uh, give us a call. The call-in number is 323-642-1579. That's 323 642-1579. 
Allen. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and right after this commercial break, we'll be right back. Sports is a common denominator in the lives of people everywhere. Our celebration of sports creates an environment that gives athletes an amazing experience that enhances their lives. Athletes work long and hard to be the best at that thing that gives them so much elation. But what happens after the athlete is done? When a circumstance comes up and they're no longer able to play that sport. Whether it's the high school athlete who doesn't get that scholarship to go to the next level. Or the college athlete that doesn't get picked in the draft. Or even the professional athlete who now has to retire and find something else to do day to day. Many athletes struggle with this transition from competition to regular everyday life. This transition causes trauma and that trauma often leads to depression, anxiety, anger, and even health issues. Author Terry Robinson noticed this problem and researched it and came up with the book Athlete Transition Stress. This book deals with the subconscious programming and conditioning that goes on in an athlete's mind while participating in a sport. So if you or anyone you know are dealing with these issues related to transitioning from a sport, pick up the book athlete transition stress and share your story in our global community online at www.letgroup1.com athlete transition stress is available on amazon.com and on the let group website at www.letgroup1.com Man, just amazing, amazing, amazing by <laughs> Terry Robinson. Uh, man, our good friend, uh, Terry came up with athlete stress and stuff. And to talk about all the stress and all the crazy things that athletes go through uh, while they're playing sports, which helps them to forget about the problems that they have. But then once the sport is over, once the sport is done, then the undealt with situations and circumstances come back. And this book talks about how to deal with it. So, Please go pick up your copy today of Athlete Transition Stress by my good friend Terry Robinson. It is on uh, the website www.letgroup1.com and also on Amazon.com. So without further delay, I'm going to hand it off to Terry. And Terry, go ahead and continue this great conversation. Yeah, we, we we're having a pretty spirited conversation tonight about a serious issue, really. You know, because everything that we stand for is really about health. You know, in my opinion, you know, how do we how do we get to, you know when they make that transition from plan, you know, because I I believe that sports is ra- is actually an escape from reality for a lot of people. It gives you a couple of hours, depending on what you plan, to escape whatever those circumstances are that you don't want to deal with. And so, you know, I think one of the main things that I saw in this case with the Duke kid is I saw this kid, and I don't mean it in a bad way because he's he's somebody's child. And I saw the way that he was acting, and I said, man, this kid needs an intervention. He needs an intervention. Uh, great athlete. And, and, and so many times, as athletes, athletes get used for their talents and their abilities. And then when those talents and abilities are no longer present, they're left struggling with the aftermath, which is these different types of behaviors, substance abuse, whatever, abusive, domestics, you, you, you name it, broke, whatever. Exactly. And I yeah. think a lot of it is, is is the end result of these types of situations where they get used up and they don't even realize it. You know what I mean? So so we're talking about the Grayson Allen, his story, I mean, his situation, plus the biases in, in, in society, not just in athletics, but society. And so a good, good friend of mine a long time ago, Bobby, Bobby Jones, played baseball, CBS, Chicago. And he came in and made some very good points. And he, you start you start talking about a couple of other uh, athletes before we uh, went to commercial break. So can you enlighten us a little bit more about those those two those two athletes? 
Yeah, yeah, that's right, Terry. And excuse me, guys, I don't remember the two kids' names. I know the one kid from Stanford, the swimmer, his last name is Turner. Um, but the football player at Vanderbilt, I can't – I don't remember his name. However, but the story just – and it's not as serious at all for what Grayson did. But the other gentleman mentioned that it's a societal issue, and it, it really is. When you look at what the kid from Stanford did and the kid from Vanderbilt, the football player – they both were charged with rape, of uh, raping two uh, unconscious females. The kid from Stanford, his dad is well-to-do, privileged. This kid gets a slap on the wrist. I think he spent 30 days in jail, and his dad said the kid shouldn't be punished for 20 minutes of pleasure. However, the kid from Vanderbilt committed the same crime. Now, don't, get, don't misconstrue what they both did was wrong, and they both should have received the proper jail time that you, the offense that you should get for, for committing rape. But the kid, Correct. Vanderbilt, I think he got 15 years. And the, and, and the kid from Stanford, he's back enjoying his life and, and trying to move forward. He got 30 days in supervised jail. So it's, it's a real issue. It's a societal, it's a systemic issue that it's way beyond sports. And what Coach K is doing and what he's done with this situation is basically perpetuating it. He didn't handle this situation properly. He threw a lot of wolf tickets, and when this first happened, that he was going to really handle this, and he's going to do this, and I don't know when the kid is going to be out, but I know he's going to be out for a while. Well, a while was one game, and Grayson is back, and – one of the callers mentioned, uh, one of the hosts of the show said, um, you know, if Grayson ever, if he really learned something from this, how can he learn something from it? What he learned was, I can do this once, twice, as many times, and I can get away with it. They'll yell at me, they'll get mad at me, and you go sit down for a little while, but it's okay, basically. And, you know, that's, that's where we are, and, and it's a real, real issue that something needs to be done. But if it's, it's a systemic issue, who's going to handle that? Who's going to make the difference? Well, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the real problem. Exactly right. And I, I got the names of those players, by the way. I went and looked it up real okay. quick. The guy from okay. uh, Vanderbilt was Brandon Vandenberg, and he was the one that was, uh, that was sentenced at that long period of time. And then the Stanford rape, uh, the, the person that uh, got charged for rape was Brock Turner. That's the swing. So definitely yeah, want to yeah. let everybody know exactly who these people are that we're speaking of. And just to mention earlier, you know, the other caller mentioned if it was a, a University of Cincinnati player. You remember the Bobby Huggins guys? Mm, they just yep. had a reputation. You know, when I first started in television, I worked in Albany, Georgia. D'Antonio wow. Wingfield is from Albany, Georgia. His problems didn't just start in Cincinnati. His problems started in small southwest Albany, Georgia, where they kept pushing him along. He was a great athlete, 6'8", jump out the gym, happened to play for a high school that was number one in the nation from a small southern town. But D'Antonio had issues. And they kept pushing him along. He goes to Cincinnati, and they had these type of players that got the reputation of being roughnecks or just bad kids. Bobby Huggins had to deal with that. Not all those kids were bad, but they had that reputation. And it just is not fair. Then it happened, you know, with the Portland Jail Blazers. It happens in the pros. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rashid Wallace, you know, Rashid Wallace is just an emotional guy. Rashid Wallace is not trying to hurt anybody. He's not a thug. He's just an emotional guy. But there's a difference. Black kids can't, they don't get the label as being an emotional guy. Mm-hmm. Jason Allen, Christian Leitner, he's just an emotional guy. Wow, a black kid. Yeah, yeah. He has, a, he wow. has a problem, and wow. you know that's, that's something that we can't sh- we can't shy away from those things, and we we gotta address. Kids get labeled. Yeah, yeah, and you're exactly that's right. Because exactly. those kids from yeah. Cincinnati are automatically labeled, you know, a certain thing. You know, you hear words like thugs and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, um, then you hear they're you see Grace and Allen. They're cold words. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're buzz words and cold words. Yeah, guys. And, what about uh, what about what Phil Jackson did? Remember what Phil Jackson did? Where everybody got mad and he talked about LeBron. Remember? Uh, I forgot. He talked yeah. about LeBron went home for With Thanksgiving. His posse. Yeah, his posse and all of that. It's like wow. You know what I'm saying? Like where did that word come from? And he used that like it was nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it, it meant nothing. Like, that was the word that you were supposed to use. When really, in all actuality, it's a label that he put on pound for pound the best player that's in the game right now. You know what I mean? I mean, well, you can a lot of times. He's a there, great player and he can have those labels. Well, go ahead. See, I think there's a thing, there's a, no, I'm just saying, there's a thing called a Freudian slip. That means that you say something that you really mean, but you probably didn't really yeah. you say it, but it was in you. Exactly. And I think yeah, that happens exactly. a lot because we've been programmed and conditioned. And so when you hear uh-huh. these particular things, you can already associate what color the person is or what race they come from. Mm-hmm. It's, it's deeply wood within the fabric of the nation. And, 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 yeah. and we have to put these things out there so people become but, aware of it. And, and the key word you said, Terry, was program. And I think, wow. you know, for my Myself, you know, I'm from a small rural town in Iowa. You know, I, you know, I I heard you know certain words, certain phrases, and stuff like that as a young kid. You know, automatically you're getting programmed to associate certain mm-hmm. things with a group of people, and you know it's it's a uh, it's a challenge. And that's you know you know I do believe that there's such thing as white privilege. That you know as a as a white person, I have to be able to evaluate. I look at that and go, man. When something comes up, you know I do have bias. You know I have to be honest. Like when when someone when I see something or someone says something, because we have been programmed. But the challenge is, is we have to learn to deprogram ourselves. And I think yeah. that, you know the situation with like Grace and Allen or someone like that. That uh, you know I, I think people are programmed to associate and think of certain things based on what he looks like. And, uh, and I don't think it's fair. That uh, or even consistent, because that's to me that's what it's about is being consistent and fair. That if, if you're a different player from a different institution and you have the same behaviors, automatically you're associated based on you know how we're programmed and like you said code words and you know associations and things like that. And you know how how as a society do we get to the point where we recognize that? And how does a person like, you know, Duke University, one of the best educational institutions in the United States, you know, they have the opportunity to do something about it, change perceptions, to, to show consistencies, and uh, instead they just kind of sweep it under the rug, and then you have Coach K that does the same. And that's what kind of perpetuates or keeps, you know, that the system going in the direction it does, which is, again, unfair to the, the whole group of people. Um, which is, you know, and, and again, I think sports is a microcosm of our society we live in um, because wow. people not only have to deal with in sports, but they also have to deal with in the workplace, um, you know, down at the restaurant, you know, I mean, just different places that, you know, um, people, you know, deal with, you know, the, the key word is programmed. And I think we've all been programmed to believe and think based on our experience and some things that we've been told when we're younger, but how how do we disassociate or how do we um, challenge ourselves to make ourselves uncomfortable and, and question some of those things? And and, and, I, and I think that's what people have to learn to do: is question why is this happening over here at Duke, and why is this happening here over in Cincinnati, and coming up with an honest conclusion and uh, being able to conclude that hey, we we have some differences here. Why is one group being treated different than the other group? Well, I, I think it's, we. I think it's competition at its best. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I think we know why it's done that way. But I just wanted to throw out this: just think of the impact if Coach K had handled it, handled this situation by truly reprimanding Grayson for doing what he did, suspending him for five games, or I don't know the amount of games, but one wasn't sufficient. So if he had suspended him for five games and, you know, had him to do this or do that, do a public apology, because Mm. this is uh, an occurring situation. And the impact of someone like Coach K had lowered the boom, lowered the hammer on his own star player. 
that would have just sent shockwave that even a hey, coach K did that. Mm-hmm. But you, like, like the gentleman just mentioned, he perpetuated the situation by really just by doing nothing about it. Yeah. So, he had and, a chance and, and, to really and, make and, an impact. Yeah, and and you know what? And, and also to piggyback off of what Lance just said, I think the other thing is this. It, it, that action by Coach K really kind of feeds into that whole programming thing again, if you really think about it, guys. Because think about it now. You say, well, hey, you know what? That kid made a mistake. Um, you know, he, he's passionate. You know, we use all those words. Those other words about that, but man, sometimes I've been heard that kid's a thug, or oh, why did he do that? And I mean, we hear that about an elbow being thrown or gesture um, from from other people. So it's it's it's, it's amazing, uh, Lance. Because that's a great point about just the programming that we have, and how many times we don't even realize it. You know, nobody really realizes it. either side really doesn't realize it. They just at, at times even embrace it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Terry, what do you think about that? Well, you know, I I just can't help but think about it. It's just like I said, it's a societal issue. It's program. We just, we just had a president that won based on those same realities that we're talking about. That's true. You know, wow. he used a lot of cold wow. words. He, he, wow. I mean, it's competition at best, and they they're gonna win regardless because they, if that's what they got to do, throw low blows to win, that's what I'm gonna do. And he it worked for him. So if you you can get to the highest office in this country doing the same thing. Why would anybody want to do anything different? Exactly. You know what I mean? I think what we're talking about, we're we a minority in what we're thinking and talking about when it comes to winning. Because uh-huh. that's what we've been conditioned and programmed to do. Win, by all means. You know, do whatever yep. it takes. And that's what we're saying. That's true. Yeah, exactly. That's true. And, 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 that's and, true. And then we always think, a lot of people think, it, it's just that negative connotation. And Lance, I, I want to hear more from you on this. Because you bring uh-huh. a very good viewpoint and a very good, um, you know, your angle and your perspective is very good. But but the thing is, you know, you coming from a smaller town in Iowa, like you said, you were programmed, you heard different things. And when you saw certain actions and you saw people acting a certain way, all you had to fall back on was what, what you heard when you grew up. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I mean. Is, is yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, the you know the truth is is you know when you're five six years old and you're around adults and obviously you hear certain words certain phrases and you don't know anything different um, you just assume that it's the truth you know what I mean because the adult should be right you know what I mean um, and a lot of times you know I come from a high school where there weren't no minorities, you know, there wasn't a lot of exposure or experience, you know, to other uh, ideas, other cultures and stuff like that. So you just make assumptions based on when you're not, based on what you've been told. And so there's nothing to really challenge that. Now, when you get to a certain point where you start to question that, you go, you know, everything that they said isn't necessarily true. Um, and, you know, some people have the ability to question it. Some people prefer not to because I think it's easier not to question it and just kind of go with it because, you know, that's sometimes, you know, safer. I mean, you're with a group of people, you know, someone makes a comment or someone makes an association, you know, most people just want to kind of go with the group. No one wants to kind of stand up and say, man, that's not right. What, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? So, so and, that's, and that's kind of the challenge, and I think that's where we're at with this situation. You know, who, who's willing to stand up? And say, you know, this is inconsistent. This isn't fair. Why does one person get to catch a break? And you know, our caller made a great example. We had a, you know, two two, two similar circumstances in the justice system, but two different results or conclusions as far as the mm-hmm. sentence. And we all know what that's based on. Um, you know, bias. You know, I've you know, I've I've had a business with, with Terry and uh, you know a, a, another African American. And uh, there was three of us in the business, you know, and I sat in rooms, sat in meetings where, you know, it was a, the head of DHS, you know, the head of you know, the lieutenant governor, uh, you know, politicians. And it, it happens at that level, too, believe me, um, that people have perceptions 
and uh, make assumptions based on what someone looks like. Um, and I'm sure wow. Terry can tell this story too, but we we sat in a room of like three or four politicians, and we were sharing our business story, and the head of the Ways and Means, you know, he, he controlled where the money goes in the state. He walked right past Terry and walked to me and said, man, that's, you came up with a great business plan. That's, that's real creative. Uh, Thinking uh, that, you know, I was the one that created it. <laughs> that, you know, it wasn't the three of us. So, so that's just, you know, that's the society we, we live in. And, you know, that guy, he might be a politician, but he's been programmed to think and believe um, based on his experience, and he believed that I was probably the, the the lead guy or the innovator of our business. When the truth is, it was you know the three of us. And you know he bypassed, yeah. walked right by Terry, like he wasn't even standing there, and I uh, wow. went and shook my hand. And and that's and that's you know that's the society we live in. And you know who's willing to one be honest about it and question it, and you know because. It can be a sensitive issue, um, for sure, and I think that's one of the reasons people do avoid it because you know it can be uh, uncomfortable, sensitive, and you know things can be said that well, you know, the other side could easily you know personalize. Well, um, well you know so the, that's the, the challenge truth, in front of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, but the truth is this: you know there are a lot of people that try to challenge it, but there's a big machine that you're going up against. As, the more you try to, to put it out there, the more they try to push it. You know, hush, hush. I'm telling you, it's mm-hmm. going up against uh-huh. a big machine. They, 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 they got. Trust me, they got boundaries. They got, they got people out here keeping things in order. You know that you, that we don't see. The average person don't see. They got gatekeepers. That's what you call them. They gatekeepers. They're gonna make sure that it doesn't go too far. Because why aren't they they plastering this stuff everywhere? That's because everybody's working together. They say, no, nope, we're not going to allow this to happen to Duke, Coach K. Uh-uh. We're going to do Now, if it, like you said, if it was a soldier Florida State, it, it's a done deal. But I'm telling yeah. you, there's gatekeepers all around. And like you said, with the business, we, we experienced that from the top, the, the, from the very top in the, in the state of Iowa, from the very top. Yes. I mean, we sat in meetings with the, the – you couldn't go any higher. And, and listen to some of these people, it was amazing. It, it was amazing wow. what they did yeah. and how they, how they treated us. Yes. Hey, I have a question. Um, hey, Lance, this is Bobby. Yes. When he when he walked past Terry and shook your hand and said that was a great idea you come up with, did what did you, what did you say to him? Uh, I was I was shocked. Um, you know, I, I didn't have much of a reaction because, you know, we were there for, you know, different reasons. Um, you know, that I don't want to go into too much. So it wasn't necessarily a good meeting because, you know, in the state of Iowa, you know, we were going for certain contracts and we were being overlooked for contracts. And we went and talked to the politicians like, hey, what's going on here? You know, we have our national accreditations. We have our state licenses. You know, we've done good in all aspects. But why are we being looked for, overlooked for these, you know, state contracts? And, uh, you know, I you know, I didn't have much of a reaction because I was kind of shocked, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I was, you know, it, it kind of threw me off. and I, I mean, that's the, that's the honest answer. Um, because well, when he walked past that. you. Go ahead, go ahead, Terry. That's I, yeah, go I ahead, remember Steve. that day because because I, I know I, I picked up on it before you did, Lance, because I said something to you yeah. about it. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The stuff is so deeply, you know, Woven within the society. I mean, you it, you didn't even catch it right away. I just looked. I said, really? Because I heard yeah. exactly what I said. Did you hear what he just said? He said, man, you, after they just got to treating us, man, in this meeting, and say, well, you got that was a re- you, really innovative uh, business plan you guys came you came up with. I said, did he just? I just hear what he just said. I said, wow. I mean, but once again, yeah, that's and true, I mean, he said I, it. Yeah. And, and that, and that well, is a part of, you know, being, uh, to me, the kind of the white privilege because, you know, I've sat in meetings with Terry and Ben, several things, like he said, the code word that he picked up on that, you know, as a white person, I just kind of overlook because I, I really haven't had that experience. And when we, when we leave the meetings, they, they go, you hear that? And they go, dang, you guys are right. You know, I, I, I didn't yeah. even pick up on that because, you know, as, as uh, a, a person that hasn't experienced that because you the, the truth is, is 
Um, as a white person, I'm not going to experience that. Um, when I go into a room, um, I'm not going to have that bias, and so I'm not going to be able to pick up on it. Um, and, and, that, and I think that's the biggest difference. Um, but, you know, one of the things I think about, you know, even watching the, the national championship game last night, you know, you got football, basketball, and the college sports. You know, 80, I, I would say 78% of the, the athletes are, you know, african American. And, you know, these guys are going through these institutions, and there you have these institutions that have those built-in biases, um, you know, treat people differently. Um, well, and and then I have an experience that they could have. Well, you know, I, I you know what I thought you were just about to say, you know, because yeah. I'm looking at the game too, and I, I I'm I'm breaking everything down, and I'm looking like you said, ninety eighty five to ninety percent of the players are African American, yeah. and guess what the coaches say I've looked like. You you I it, it was amazing to me. I'm just looking at this like really, I mean, if you look in the NFL, I mean all these, and I know we jumping. You know, because we talk about the great time, but when we talk about these things, I mean, it's it's systemic. You know, it's everywhere. You know, because I'm looking at all the coaches and what do they look like? You know, what do they look like? Exactly. They look. Do they reflect the players that they that they're, they're coaching or that they're teaching, parenting? Exactly. No. Well, yeah, it's about yeah, taking I, a stand. You know, it's yeah. about well taking a stand and a stand and and not being concerned about the repercussions at times. And when you have an opportunity to make a stand when it's something relevant and important and just, we need to speak. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that situation well, with, with coach. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just, I just had to add this because Terry just made a great, great point because these guys played basketball. You know, I was just thinking that, you know, a lot of times when you have assistant coaches, that are African American, you know, what are they known as? Great they're they're known as the recruiters. <laughs> yeah, uh, great uh, recruiters. Not great coaches, wow. but great recruiters. And so, so it's just yeah. built in systems that you know that uh that people can't overcome. You know, I mean it isn't like I mean they they can be great coaches because obviously on, you know, uh practices and stuff like that, a lot of times the assistants run practices. But yeah, you're right. They, let's bring in someone that's a great recruiter or they get kind of labeled as a great recruiter and how do you ever move, move up to the coaching rank um, when you're known as a great recruiter and not a great coach? You know, you think of some, of these, some of these cold words or cold phrases, you know, a, a kid, you know, a black kid, he's raw. He has raw talent. This white kid, he's He's smart. He's really he- he's a heady guy. He understands. He he he, he gets it. The, the black kid is an athlete. The white kid is a smart guy. You know, yeah, we, 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 st- yeah. we 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 still deal with that. You know, my 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 son is nine years old. He's a very good baseball player at nine years old. And in order for and I'm telling him, son. I'm taking you out of this league and I'm going to put you in this league. But these are the things that you're going to have to look when you look at. And when you look around, you're not going to see a lot of people that look like you. But you play baseball because not, not a lot of us play baseball. Exactly. And, you know, a kid, has a, he has a good strong arm. But he's raw talent. But the, that the white kid is, is, is a smart kid. You know, so those yeah. are things you got to teach your kids so, and keep keep their self esteem. When, when, when you when, yeah. so, so, when, when you take so, your so, so, so just so so with that being said, so with that being said, we're gonna bring it all the way back to Grayson. So we went yeah. back yeah. and we said, okay, it's the labeling, right? Right, guys, it's the labeling that's going on. Yes. Um, it, and then it affects us, society. You know, the whole our whole society sees things in such a different way that actually there are people out there that are saying, hey, I have no problem with the suspension. I have no problem with this. I'm quite sure Coach K dealt with it, that type of thing. But I have seen, whereas if a, if, if, if a kid of another race, black or whatever, did anything like that, they would call for that kid's head on a platter. So are we saying that this societal issue with labeling and, and our perception is probably one of the main things that kind of garnered this left, 
you know, this, this suspension, this, this, this one game suspension when it was supposed to be five, is that one of the things that really motivated that? I'm just throwing that out there for the conversation. What do you guys think? Uh, definitely, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a perfect example. My senior year in college, we had a coach um, that was just, just wasn't a good person. I'll leave it that way at that time. Hopefully he got his life together. I don't know, but he wasn't. So anyway, towards the end of the season, we ended up boycotting the game. And the majority of our players happen to be African Americans at Drake University, and uh, I'm telling you, we went to that that get the first game that he was not he didn't um, he was gone he was let go. I'm telling you, we went to that game that the stands were half empty, nobody showed up, and they had they had jerseys with empty seats, jerseys sitting in empty seats. Why was that? Calling us crybabies because we stood up, you know, because that never happened. People don't boycott those games. When you're in college, nobody does it. We stood up. And you know what they called? They called us crybabies. And half the stands were empty. At Duke, did you see? Was I mean, when, when this kid, when they laced them up, that's the, 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 the stadium was filled to the rafters. You know, so it, it, it just goes to show you there's a difference there. There's bias there. You know, there, there is a difference. You know, and whether people want to see it or not, there, it's there. And so you can slide this kid in. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And nobody, nobody, nobody even acknowledges it. I guess what I was going to say, you know, we can have these discussions and these, but what do we do? Well, that's what exactly comes where from I was this? going, Carla. You took the words right out of my mouth. We talked you know, about what, what comes from this? Exactly. We have the solution. And, and by the way, Carla, this might be your first time listening, but we always talk about solutions or, or ways okay. that we can move towards it. So, you took the words right out of my mouth. So, Lance, I'm going to throw it at you, man. What What's some of the solutions? we got about seven minutes left, by the way. So you got to be quick and you got to be dirty about it. And, by the way, Carla, um, this is our 10th show, and we're going to do about okay. 10 more. So you are welcome to call back anytime, and we're going to continue this discussion. So this is one of the well, solutions I appreciate it. for us to talk about it and move forward with some action. So, Lance, what are some of the solutions? Give me some of your thoughts. Well, I, I think there's a, a couple of solutions, and you know, individually, um, I think we all have to look at ourselves. And you know, one of the things that I try to do is recognize my biases. Um, you know, I can be watching TV or you know, have an interaction with somebody or see something, and you know, automate automatically come up with an assumption based on how I've been programmed. Now, it's important as an individual is again, I said before, is how do you deprogram yourself? when you run into those situations, you know, just tell yourself, you know what, you know, why do I think that, you know, that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, that's just, you know, misinformation. And so really as an individual, I think you really got to question yourself and, and be willing to do that. Um, because I think people automatically think that because they have bias that they might be, you know, racist or something like that. But, and that's not necessarily true because I think we all have bias. Um, and so, yeah. Um, being open and honest about that. And then, you know, second of all, I think, you know, a lot of, I, I, I really believe that a, a lot of uh, this is institutional. And that's why, you know, I was disappointed in, you know, Duke, you know, the ACC and even the coach, all institutions um, that had an opportunity to, you know, do something different. Because the ACC could have easily came in and stepped in and say, okay, you guys did a one game. No, we need to do a three because we need to be consistent and fair. And, you know, I think that's, I think that's where a lot of these uh, issues are really per- perpetuated or, you know, they're kept going because we don't address the institutions because if you look right. at most institutions, they're, they're definitely uh, ran or, you know, you look at most of the boards or most of the college presidents or, you know, most of the people in positions of power, you know, they're, they, they, they don't look like the, the basketball players or the football players or the kids in sports. And so they are, without even recognizing, I'm sure they have bias. And so wow. so really it's uh, there's a lot of solutions. But how does one person make an impact? I think the biggest thing you can do is really look at yourself and evaluate yourself and be honest um, with, yeah. you know, how you view people. And, you know, it's, it's it goes across the board, you know what I mean, from – all different cultures to, and, yeah. and and things like that. So, 
Yeah, Terry, what, what do you so think? Like we, got about, we got about three minutes left, Terry. So what's your what's your thoughts, man? I mean, what's the solution? Man, you, you always do this to me, man. Give me three minutes. You know <laughs> Well, <laughs> hey, that's the answer. You know, last, 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 man, 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 <laughs> right, right. See, Bobby, you, you, see, you, you. See, this is what you did for a living, man. So you, you understand yeah, the time, man. I do. <laughs> but, but the, but, but the reality of it is, man, we all are teachers. We, we, we're teaching, you know, one way or another. When people, you know, whether we're talking or whether we're just walking down the street, we're teaching. And so, what are, what are we teaching? And how do you educate people? Mm-hmm. You know. And everybody's not gonna get it. That's the reality of it. But if I can if I can reach five people or ten people and then they reach another five or ten people and that's one of the things that we're working on as a group, you know, through through writings, through, through talk, through radio talk, whatever. We have to put the information out there. Because there 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 are people out there that, that are open to it. But uh one thing I learned is that there's indiscriminate bias. You know what I mean? And that's that's something that, you know, uh, the average person may not even be aware of. You know, and so we have to educate people, and we have to do the things that we're doing like tonight, over and over again, getting in front of people, talking about people, and being able to receive what they have to throw back at us. Because a lot of people, they're gonna fight. They're gonna fight. You mean to tell me that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not fair. You know, the average person believes that they are. So how do you break through that? How do you break through that? And I'm telling you, it's 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 education, and it's it's repeating it over and over again, and, and framing yeah. things up where people can receive it. Where, you know, it, it, that's what it's going to take. It's yeah, a one, one thing, Terry. One one thing, Terry. Too, that, to just really piggyback you back off of what you said, man. One, um, so so I'm I'm going to combine both things that you and Lauren said. Number one, you got to look at yourself. Before you can even think about trying to make a fact or change in anything that you're doing, you got to look at yourself. And a lot of people don't like looking in the mirror. They don't want to admit that they do have something going on in their head or something that's a little bit off. And, and they don't want to say, well, hey, you know what? I do have this bias. And then the second thing is this, Terry, uh, uh, going out and educating yourself with reading, like, like you know, and I'm not trying to pump us up, but what, what, with what we've written, Athlete Transition Stress, where we start to break down these issues. Terry, you send me videos all the time that talk about how I grew up and how that affected my mind and how it affects things that I do. Um, you have to educate yourself, and you have to look at yourself very hard when you do that. Then from there, all you have to do is share what you have been doing for yourself. God, it's easy to share. Do we all have phones? Does everybody on this on this uh, radio show right now that under the sound of my voice have a phone? Everybody has a phone, correct? And what is the main correct. thing that you can do with a post, with a video? You can hit share and send it to someone else. And that's the main way that we can get this message out. Guys, everybody out there, we're not saying we're, we're, this is a this was a very civil very calm discussion that we're having about a situation that is running rampant in our society. Um, Bobby, we got a minute left, yes. and I would be remiss if I don't thank you for your poignant discussion, man. We really appreciate you. Right, guys? Yeah, man. Oh, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate hey, you, I really appreciate you. you guys having me, right. man. I, I thought it was relevant. It's important. And, uh, you know, anytime I can reconnect with, with Terry or any one of my uh, high school buddies, I will, especially in a situation like this. We just all have to be held accountable exactly. and not be afraid. You know, we, if you see something, you have to speak on it. And, exactly. you know, right. We, if, if each individual, like, I think we've all kind of pointed to that. You all, you, you can't be afraid. You have to, to make a stand. And I, I, I think that's the, that's the thing here. If, if someone in a higher authority, or just someone who in, who Coach K in trust confronted him and told him, Mike, you have to do more than this. Maybe he would have thought different. And that person had to deal with the consequences of dealing with Coach K because you know that he is a major figure at that school and, and in that conference. So you just have to be held accountable and not be afraid. 
Man, that's a great way to end the show. Great way to end the show. Bobby, thank you for that. Guys, this was a great, great show. Um, man, dealt with some serious issues. And, and, and as the year goes on, we're definitely going to deal with some light issues. We're definitely going to continue to talk about sports. But one thing about this that everybody needs to understand, sports and our society and our world are mirror images. Never forget that. They are not separate, but they are one and the same. If you look at the lives of many of the athletes that are competing, a lot of what they're doing, a lot of what they dealt with in their life is reflected in the sport that they are participating in. And that's something that we always, always try to bring out in everything that we do. Guys, thank you for joining us. Lance, Terry, awesome show again. Bobby, thank you again. And, hey, we'll see you next week. And don't forget to join us on the Life Quiz Show. Have a wonderful week. Peace. Thank you for joining us on the Life's Twist Show. When you have a chance, please check out our website at www.letgroup1.com and see all of the things that we'll be doing over the next several weeks. In the meantime, have a great week, and we'll see you soon.